Mrs. Baker? He barely gives me any money, Your Honor. Last month, he only gave me $300. That's why I should have 100% custody of Brittany. No, I want to stay with Daddy, too. Shh, quiet, baby. Is that true, Mr. Jones? Are you not able to take care of your ex-wife's financial needs? The things have been a little tight lately, Your Honor. After I pay food and rent, I give her all the money I have. But that's still not enough. $300 a month, Roger? That's pathetic. And it's a good thing we have Damien now, who makes twice as much money as you. I may not make a lot of money, but that does not make me a bad father. You see, when we were married, I didn't have a lot. But every day I would pick Brittany up from school. I'd ask her how did her day go. And we'd laugh the whole way home. And whenever we got home, no matter what I was doing, I'd always put Brittany's needs first. I'd give her all my time and attention so that she could get ahead in life. And at night, I took my baby girl into bed and read her bedtime stories. I'd watch her smile and slowly fall asleep, knowing that her daddy loves her. So you see, I may make only half the money, but I give twice as much love, and that's what matters. I'm sorry, but well, that is the saddest excuse I have ever heard. Roger, you can't pay bills with love. Order. Settle down, Mrs. Baker. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Well, I've listened to your testimonies, but I'm gonna have to give this some more thought. This court will re-adjourn in two days for my decision. Daddy, I don't wanna be without you. And I don't want to be without you either, baby. Brittany, get over here right this minute. The next day, the mom and Damien pick up Brittany from school. Brittany tries to tell him how her day was, but he couldn't care less. The mom watches on, remembering how Roger would make Brittany laugh and smile. Later on, Brittany asks Damien for help with her homework, but he doesn't make any time for her. The mom looks over, remembering how Roger would give her so much attention. That night, as Brittany's about to go to sleep, she asks Damien to read her a bedtime story but he says no. The mom watches sadly, now realizing how much of a better father Roger was towards Brittany. And then the next day, they come back to the courtroom. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Your Honor. Ms. Baker, is your boyfriend not joining? Oh, no. We're actually no longer together. I see. Well, Mr. Jones, you seem like a great dad, but given your financial situation, I think it's best to grant Mrs. Baker 100% custody. Uh, if that's still what you want, Miss Baker. What? No, Yana, please. Mom, please. I don't want to be without Daddy. I can't live without my baby. I'm sorry, but unless Miss Baker changes her mind, I hereby grant her 100% custody of... Wait! I... I changed my mind. 
I realize now that Roger really is a good father. Even if he, he only has half as much money, he gives her twice as much love and that's all that matters. And maybe we can try to be a family again. I would love that. Yay! I love you so much. I love you too, sweetheart. And they live happily ever after. Sweet dreams, sweetheart. This is the case of Norma Jones versus Alan Jones. Plaintiff, you may begin. Your Honor, I'm suing the defendant, my mom, for wrongful eviction. She kicked me out of the house. Let me get this straight. You're suing your own mother for kicking you out of her house. Mrs. Jones, is this true? Your Honor. I love my son very much, but this was the only way I could think to help him. You see- Help me? All you're doing is hurting me. She either needs to let me move back in with her or pay me to live somewhere else. Order. Mrs. Jones, you were saying, how exactly is kicking him out helping him? As hard as this is for me, he has to learn how to stand on his own two feet. You see, for the past 34 years, I've taken care of everything for him. All Alan does is stay home and play video games. He doesn't even clean up after himself. So I have to do it for him. I've pleaded with him to get a job or to go to school so that he could make something of himself. But no matter how much I've tried, he's never been interested in any sort of work. And I'm not rich. I don't make very much money. I've had to beg him to help me pay rent or help with the bills. But instead, he spent thousands of dollars on my credit card without even contributing a dime. And so you see, if I just let it continue, he would never learn the importance of hard work. He would only be relying on me. So I had to do the hardest thing that I have ever done. I kicked him out of the house. That is ridiculous. I'm your son. It's your responsibility to take care of me. All right, settle down. Mr. Jones, you've never paid any rent or contributed toward any bills? Well, no. Okay, then you don't have any legal right as a tenant. Court rules in favor of the defendant. You're a grown man, Mr. Jones. I suggest that you act like it. Your mother's trying to teach you a good lesson. What? No! Why do you hate me so much? Oh, honey, please. I love you. I'm just trying to teach you the value of hard work. Whatever. I don't need you. I'll figure it out on my own. You are seriously the worst mom in the world. Alan, please. 
Alan storms out, leaving his mom there heartbroken, questioning if she's made the right decision. Without any money or his mom to support him, Alan has no choice but to finally apply for a job. It doesn't take him long to get hired and start working at a new company. He eventually gets his own place and begins to become more independent. Without his mom around to do everything for him, He realizes he can't go back to his old ways, so he starts to clean up after himself and even learns how to pay his own bills. It's a lot more responsibility than he thought, but he now realizes just how much his mom had been doing for him and begins to see that she was right. A few months pass, and then one day, Alan decides to go pay his mom a visit. Alan. Hi, Mom. I actually was coming to see if you'd let me move back in. Oh. Um. I, I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, I, I just came by to say I'm sorry. And to thank you for loving me enough to show me the value of hard work. (sighs) I am so happy to hear you say that. (sighs) All this time, I had been wondering if I made the right decision. You did, Mom. And I'm so thankful. Oh, here, I, I almost forgot. What is this? Just my way of saying thank you for being the best mom in the world, taking care of me all those years. I know it's not much, but there's a lot more coming. Oh, Alan. I love you so much. I love you too. So you see, Your Honor, it's without question that this defendant did these crimes. No, that's impossible. I wasn't in Philly when it happened. I was in LA at a Dodgers game. He's lying. You can tell by looking at him. Order. Defendant, do you have any proof of your alibi? Uh, uh, no, we don't have any proof, Your Honor. Okay, well, if there's no evidence to corroborate Robert's story, the court finds the defendant, Robert Williams, guilty on all six counts of assault with a deadly weapon. Wait, what, what? No, no, what? No, no, please, please, not my baby boy. He didn't do it. I know he did it. Your Honor, please, you have to believe me. I'm innocent. I put that on my life. You know I didn't do this. You know it! Order! Mr. Williams, that's enough, not another word. We'll reconvene tomorrow for sentencing. Daddy! No, please! Don't go! Everything's gonna be okay, sweetie, I promise. Daddy loves you so much. Hey, boss. What if he's telling the truth? What if we got the wrong guy? Well, you don't think I know what I'm doing? No, no, I'm not not saying that, I'm just... I'm wondering if maybe we shouldn't take another look at the facts. I just want a case. (laughs) Who cares whether he did it or not? All that's important is I'm one step closer to a promotion. And besides, people like him, they're all the same. Just a bunch of criminals. Please, sir, please. I wasn't in Philly when it happened. I was in LA at a Dodgers game. Yeah. 
well, I can see my headlines now. D.A. Graham gives low-life criminal life in prison. Keep up the great work. He's innocent. He's innocent. Can you give us a minute? Yeah. What are you talking about? He wasn't in Philly when it happened. His story checks out. Look, I have his credit card statements right here. He was making purchases in Los Angeles while the crime was happening. Okay. So? Well, so if he was in Los Angeles when the crime was happening in Philadelphia, then it couldn't have been him. We have to get these to the defense right away. Have you lost your mind? I mean, uh, maybe somebody stole his card. Maybe he gave it to him. I can think of a thousand reasons. But, sir, that's enough. The case is over. You hear me? Now what I would suggest that you do. Walk the line so you can get ahead. I have proof. What is it now? I contacted a local convenience store and I found a photo of him. He bought a hot dog just before the game. It's not possible. Take a look. He couldn't have committed a crime in Philly if he was buying a hot dog in LA. Doesn't even look like him. It's him, I had facial recognition confirm it. Has anyone else seen this? No, why? Good, let's keep it that way. I don't want you humiliating us or risking this case because you got some pictures that don't even look like that guy. But sir- Quiet! You want to lose your job? I don't want to hear one more word about this case. What are you talking about? Well, a reporter was giving an interview outside of the game. Okay, so? So guess who walks by? There. That's Robert. He just walked through the background of the video. I, I, I can't believe this. this. This proves his innocence. We have to tell the judge. All arise. Have a seat. We have to tell the judge. We don't have to tell a soul. Is everything okay, Mr. Graham? Anything you want to share? No, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Williams, these charges against you are not minor crimes. Federal statute requires a 25-year mandatory minimum sentence. No, please, Your Honor, I'm telling you, I didn't do it. You've already been found guilty. So unless the people have anything else. This court hereby sentences a defendant, Robert Williams, to 25 years in a federal prison without no, no, the possibility no. oh, of parole. God, no. oh. oh, God. Wait! Excuse me? Wait, I, I'm sorry, Your, Your, Your Honor. He, he didn't do it. May I approach the bench? You may. Your Honor, there is no way that Mr. Williams committed those crimes. You see, I have here a credit card statement showing purchases made by the defendant with his credit card in Los Angeles on the same day that the crime took place in Philadelphia. And I also have a photo of the defendant in a convenience store here in Los Angeles buying a hot dog just mere moments before the crime took place. And I have a video as well, Your Honor, that shows the defendant at Dodger Stadium at the exact time and date that the crime was taking place in Philadelphia. 
over 2,000 miles away. So you see, Your Honor, Robert Williams could not have committed those crimes. He was telling the truth all along. Is, uh, is all this true, Mr. Grant? Uh, well, uh, Why didn't you say anything? Because he was more interested in his promotion than he was in saving an innocent man from jail. I presented him with all of this evidence, Your Honor, and yet he ignored it. Well, what'd you expect? Huh? Okay, so maybe he didn't do this crime. But I'm sure he's done dozens of others. Look at him, he's clearly a criminal. Your Honor, order. I've heard all I've needed to hear. Mr. Williams, the charges against you have been dropped. You're free to go. <laughs> Bailiff, uncuff him immediately. <laughs> and you, Mr. Graham. Oh, Obstructing justice and tampering with evidence is a very serious crime. Your Honor. I'm going to see to it that not only do you never practice law again, but that we send the right man to jail this time. You, Bailiff, arrest him. No. No, oh, this can't be happening. This case is dismissed. I told you everything was gonna be okay. <laughs> Sirs. Oh. Why did you help us? Well, because a wise woman once told me it's never too late to do the right thing. Well, well, well. If it isn't my soon-to-be ex-husband, I am going to milk you for everything you've got. First you cheat on me, and now you want to take all my money too? My attorney's going to make sure the judge knows the truth. Oh, <laughs> isn't that cute? You know what? Maybe I'll be nice and let you keep a few dollars. All rise for the Honorable Judge Jacobs. You may be seated. We're here to finalize your divorce settlement. Defendant, you can start. Your Honor, she was only with me for the money. She started cheating on me right after we got married. No, I didn't. I was always loyal to him. I put everything I had into our marriage. No, don't believe those lies. She has a history of doing this. Your Honor, the truth is, he broke my heart, and then he broke our marriage. So I feel I am entitled to 100% of everything he owes. No, she doesn't deserve a dime. Settle down. Settle down. You say she has a history of doing this? Do you have evidence? Yes. Well, my attorney does. He should be here any second. Well, since he's not here, and you don't have any proof, I'm gonna have to rule in favor of the plaintiff. Wait. I beg your pardon, Your Honor, I am here. Milton? What are you doing here? Hello, Angela. I'm his lawyer. You two know each other? Yes, Your Honor. We used to date. And she did to me the same thing that she is doing to my client. You see, 
I will never forget the day she left me. Hey, babe. Can you take me shopping? I need some more outfits for this weekend. I'm sorry, I can't. I have to study for this law exam tomorrow. Okay, fine. Just give me your credit card and I'll go by myself. I'm sorry, babe, I can't. It's all maxed out from buying my books. But I promise you in a few years when I am a lawyer, I'll buy you whatever you want. A few years? I'm not waiting around that long. Fine, I'll just go ask Chad for money then. Chad? Wait, who's Chad? The rich guy I've been seeing. How else do you think I can afford all my shopping? How, how could you do that to me? <laughs> I need a man that can afford my lifestyle. I'm sorry, but it's over. So you see, Your Honor, she cheated on me just like she cheated on my client. <sighs> I even hired a private investigator to take these photos. These photos, Your Honor, clearly show the plaintiff cheating on my client. on him. Order. Order. I've seen everything I need to see. This court rules in favor of the defendant. Plaintiff is not entitled to a dime. This court is dismissed. <laughs> nice glasses, Dork. We're not interested. Bye. <laughs> Girls, everyone wants hogs me. It's like the whole school thinks we're nerds. There's nothing wrong with being a nerd. Hey, you mind getting us some beers? Don't let them peer pressure you into drinking. You sound like such a dork, Nelson. 